Well, good morning, everybody. Would you stand and let us pray today? It's great to see you in the house of the Lord. I know the children are already gone out, so that will get us quickly uh, into the word of the Lord. Would you raise your hands to the heavens as an act of surrender to the Lord, thanking Him, uh, not only surrender, but thanking Him for all that He's done to preserve you through this week, through this year. Can you believe it's December already? Father, we thank you for this day. Like it says in Scripture, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for life and strength. We thank you for your mercies over our lives, and we pray, God, that you bless us. We thank you for all the good things you have in store for us, and we know that perhaps sometimes things don't go the way we see it, but we know we could trust in you who know all things. So we give you the praise, and we thank you for all the things you have done. In Jesus' name. And thank you for Lester winning 4 0. <laughs> and West Indies taking the ODI series from England. Nobody said amen to that because you have no idea what I'm talking about. Amen. Well, are you glad you're alive? How many glad you're alive? Would you raise your hands? Remember, if you don't raise your hands and God thinking, you're not glad you're alive, I might as well bring you home. How many glad you're alive? I mean, thankful for the food, the uh, warmth. Yeah. It's a bit milder this time. You know, you got to count our blessings. Amen. you got to remember the good things God has done for us. And in many ways, that's what I want to talk to you this morning. It's a word the Lord put into my spirit uh, as I was contemplating which way to bring the word of the Lord. At uh, this time, I was scheduled to preach. And the Lord dropped one word into my spirit, and I'm sure... You all would agree with this. It makes you happier and make you a little bit more perspective, better perspective. It's the word gratitude. Being grateful. How many think we should be a grateful generation? How many of you got at least five things you could be grateful for? Raise your hands. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them at least one thing you're grateful for. Go on, have a look at them and tell them one thing you're grateful for. And hopefully the neighbor would reply as well. There you go. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. How many of you sat with your husband or your wife? Raise your hands. I don't mean your future husband or wife. This is not a, this is not a faith step for some of you here in Jesus' name. How many of you sat with your husband or wife? And how many of you, your husband or your wife, looked at you and said, I'm just grateful for you? Did you? Right, stand up if you did. Go and stand up if they said, if your husband or your wife said, could you give them a round of applause? Wow. Lee, you're the only one standing. Did Helen not? I was so shocked I couldn't reply. Lee is great. Wow. You guys are just a model of love, isn't it? There you go. Wow, grateful for you. Pat and you, oh no, Pat's not here, but, uh, she's, but I'm sure you said it. I did. You did, so I just, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, why are you asking for a witness? Did you say, <laughs> did you say it out loud? <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things that a heart of gratitude is a great perspective in life. Because there's so many things to be ungrateful for, but as a believer, we should be grateful for all that God has given us. And I want to talk to you about the restoring power of being grateful. Amen. The restoring power of what? Amen. Being grateful. You know, when you look up the dictionary definition of gratitude, it's the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Now, I have a little bit of a problem with that definition because the Bible tells us we should be grateful even when people are ungrateful to us, we should be grateful to them. The world's idea is if somebody is grateful to you, then you return gratefulness. But the scripture's idea is totally different. The opposite of grateful is ingratitude. It's thanklessness. And no one likes people who are ungrateful and thankless and Oh, is this what you got me for Christmas? Oh, is this what you... Is this, I wanted a PS... 
whatever number, five. You got me a PS1. Actually, it might be worth more money now. I don't know if a PS1 would be worth more money. But sometimes we can think and we can measure people, their love for you and I, by what they give. But it's the heart of generosity towards us and that act of kindness and love. And that comes out of our life of being grateful. Now, in psychology, not that I approve every corner of psychology. Some of it I understand. Some of it it, we need to refer to scripture. But in psychology, here's what it says. When you feel down in the dumps or find yourself in a funk. I thought I was at music but because I'm a child of the 80s. But how do you cope? Do you turn to junk food? Well, uh, this generation, I think junk food for them is normal food. I don't know what junk food, anybody know what I'm talking about. Do you turn to junk food, self-medication, or shopping? Hey, no, that wasn't an amen point. Don't be jumping in on your amens. Hold back. That's not an amen point. One healthy, powerful, and free strategy to rise from this temporal emotional state is to practice gratitude. This is, this is psychology today. It says this. Gratitude turns what little you have into abundance. I'm grateful for my, my bread and toast. My bread and toast? My bread and butter. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but you know, when it comes to butter, I'm just a real... I, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a real butter guy. Anybody else? I don't do the one that you put on and you wait a month and still don't melt. Anybody I'm talking about? I like real butter. I was saying this to Tate. I like real milk, like whole milk. Like, re- I know the, the doctors here are all panicking right now. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I haven't, like, recently been in the hospital and come out, and they were all happy with everything I did. Um, you know, I, I said to someone, look, if, if it's my time to go, I want to know that I enjoyed some food. <laughs> Anybody else could say amen to that? All right, salad is good, but uh, anyhow, let's, let's move forward. Gratitude is so much more than saying thank you. Although thank you is part of it, but it's so much more. And gratitude changes your perspective of your world. If you're grateful and you wake up with a grateful spirit, your world changes. I remember reading a story in a Time magazine of this little boy and his grandpa was asleep on the rocking chair. And uh, the little boy got some what's called Limburger cheese. Anybody know what that is? It's a really smelly kind of cheese. And uh, he took some on his finger, and he went to his grandpa, and he put it on it right over his mustache area on his nose, rub it on, and his grand- grandfather sort of woke up and go, oh, wow, it stinks out here. Oh, oh, it stinks. So he goes inside. Oh, it stinks in- inside as well. He goes in the kitchen, it stinks. He goes, man, the whole world stinks. Well, it's not the whole world. It's just what he had on him. And sometimes we need to wipe off the funk of our lives and realize that God has blessed us with many great things that we can be thankful for, that we can bless the Lord, that we can say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Come on, church, bless His holy name. we got to be thankful. Now, let's look at Scripture. I don't want to look at psychology. I want to look at Scripture. To be thankful, gratitude is God. Gratitude is God is essential. To God is essential. Not only for the sake of all the good things He bestowed on us. Listen to this. The Christian or the believer is called to be grateful and content, not just for what gives, what he gives, but for who God is. And when we worship, like we worship today, and uh, David and the worship band did an excellent job, didn't they? Leading us into the presence of the Lord. We're not going to worship because it's my song, it's my tune, it's my set, it's my, you know. We worship the God to say, thank you for all that you have done. All that you have done in my life, I want to say, Thank you, God. You know, we used to sing an uh, old hymn uh, as a, as a, as a, when I grew up in the, in the West Indies. And uh, I think some of you might know it, unless it's a Caribbean hymn. I don't know. But it was, one, it was a hymn that says, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Is that a hymn here as well? Oh, you guys steal all our songs from the Caribbean as well. All right. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Do you know it? Turn, look full in his wonderful face. And then the things of this world will what? Grow dim. And that's the thing, is when you have your eyes on Jesus, nothing else satisfied. See, the world tries to put things in our lives that 
If you only get this, if you only book that holiday, if you only drink that drink, if you only wear those shoes, if you only have this, then you would be better. It will make you feel better for a while, but it never really brings happiness or gratitude in our lives. And one other way to show fire release a heart that is, that is happy to the Lord is to be grateful for all that God has done. Even when things are not going your way, count your blessings. Count the good things God has given you. Count the joy of the Lord is my strength. If it's wet outside and rainy, find something else to count the blessings of the Lord. If your job is might be coming to end, count the blessings of the Lord. If whatever you're going through, you've got to learn the secret of counting the good things that God has for you. Philippians 4, 11 to 14. The Apostle Paul writing here, and by the way, he's in prison when he wrote this, and he's about to be killed for his faith. He says, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned whatever situation, in whatever situation I'm to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. And in, every, in, in any and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yes, it was kind of you to share in my troubles. He's trying to tell you something. You know, most people know the, script, the part of the scripture that says, for I can do all things who Christ who strengthens me. Everybody knows that. But what he's trying to point you to the, bat of the fact of the matter is, is to be content in all situations. Not saying that you're going to stay that way, but whatever season God has you in, know that God put you there for a reason. And he's going to bring you through it. If he got you there, he's going to bring you through it. Not every season is permanent. But your attitude can keep you there longer. Oh, come on, church. One of the healing powers of the body that exists is a positive outlook in life. Happy people heal quicker. Now, I'm not saying if you're not healing up and you're sick that you're miserable. Miserable, sorry for the English people. But this is, it's proven that happy people live longer. Didn't say rich people. One of my countries I really enjoy going to, and I was there recently, is Japan. And my wife and I were recently, well, she was looking at this thing on Netflix, so I jumped in on her Netflix, and it was... Uh, Based on how many people have lived over 100 years old across the world, I don't know if you've seen it, and it's uh, Okinawa in Japan, and uh, also Italy, and a place in America. Um, strangely enough, America was listed, I was shocked. But anyhow, um, <laughs> the place in Italy, and then Okinawa, Japan. And they, they have the most amount of centurions that live on the planet today. And the common factor beside diet and exercise, now I, I'm not saying Netflix is your GP, all right? Don't, don't get that in your head. But it was just a research they were doing. But one of the common factors that they found was happy, grateful people live longer. Now, you need diet and exercise. Now, don't be happy and grateful and smoking and drinking. Then you'll be happy and grateful at the pearly gates quicker. But well, if you got there, but do, do you know what I'm talking about? But, but a happy outlook on life. And these people... The, the, this one Japanese lady, the, the uh, interviewed her, I think she was 101 or 104. And they asked her, Mom, what's the secret of your happiness? And then she said, oh, I eat this, I exercise, I get up and I walk, and uh, I do this kind of thing. But she says, I have no enemies. She said, they may have me, but I don't have them. <laughs> That's a good perspective. If people hate you, let them hate you. You don't have to hate them back. You release them, and you learn to be happy, because that's what the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. My father would always say this, and some of you would know it, but the devil has nothing to offer a rejoicing believer. If you're happy and you're content in life, you may have a car, and it's a put-put car. Do you know you want to put it there, put it there, or it's put-put-put-put, but it's coming there? At least it's your car, it's... You may not have a car. You may have to take the bus. Thank the Lord you're in a country where there is a bus timetable. Because some of us came from a country that it has a bus timetable, but the time has no table. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
Nita, you know what I'm talking about. One person better, you know, anybody I'm talking about? You've got to be thankful. Thankful for the things. You might complain about the NHS. Don't complain about the NHS. We are blessed to have the NHS and the doctors and the nurses and the school teachers and the public servants and the police officers, even if they pull you over for giving you a ticket, say thank you. <laughs> that may take a step of faith. But, you know, we've got to be thankful. When you begin to get more thankful in life, you realize that you, you, you have a better day. The news could be so negative. Have you noticed? When I was recently in Japan, because Japan's at the end of the earth, and they don't really do Western news, right? Because the stuff in, that's happening with Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, all those, they don't really, it's not really in their radar. Japan lives as an as a island to themselves. And... They were asking me about it. And so for the time I was there, the 12 days or so, uh, I had to really search for news, and I find myself not bothering searching for it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And uh, I tell you what, it's like backpacks coming off you because you're not listening to the junk that's your updates on your phone and this and increase on prices and fuel tax and this thing, and all of a sudden you're taking on things. Sometimes you've got to take the updates off your phone. Now, I'm not saying throw your phone away, but if that's what you want, that's fine. But... But some things, you've got to control what you let in. Yes. Control what you let in. And if you're going to start researching and looking stuff on YouTube about this and what that one thinks, you start putting yourself in a place that God perhaps doesn't want for you. And it puts you in a perspective that is not good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 to 22. Look at what it says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 to 22. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. That deserves an amen, doesn't it? Amen. And live, in, live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. I just paused there for a moment, just so you could hand your warnings out. Encourage those who are timid. Take care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil. But always try. Underline the word try. Always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never be. Never stop praying. And here is the one you want to underline. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belongs to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good and stay away from every kind of evil. Wow. Now, could you imagine? Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belongs to Christ. Now, there are some circumstances that is easier to be thankful for. Anybody know what I'm saying? You got a pay rise. Thank you, Jesus. You found your mobile phone. You found your keys. Thank you, Jesus. You, you, you got what you've been waiting for. Thank you, Lord. It's easy to say thank you when things go in our favor, right? Isn't that, isn't that true? Come on, church. It's very, a very different thing to say thank you when things are not working out. But that's the perspective, because he says, be thankful, not in some circumstances, but in what? All. All. Are you mad? Don't be thankful, because the doctor says, the prognosis don't look so good. Now, I don't want you to do this. This is the Lord. Because what he's trying to give you is a God perspective, that no matter what report comes your way, ultimately God has it under control. So be thankful that you're a child of God, and he's got your best interests at heart. That God works all things out together for good to them that love the Lord. God's on your side. He opens doors. He gets, he sends people before you. He puts people strategically to help you who don't even know you. Amen. That's the God you serve. Uh, recently I had surgery, just minor surgery, and because uh, you know it's hard to work on perfection. But anyhow, so I had this uh, minor surgery that I had to deal with. And uh, I, I don't, if you know me, there are some things in life I don't like. Pumpkin, corned beef, Needles are all in that category, all right? 
So I don't do needles. I don't do, I don't, like, blood is, Jesus, there's a reason why he put it inside, not to be seen on the outside. Anybody else with me? I, I couldn't be a doctor or a nurse or one of those people with blood, you know. I'd, so I, mean, I had this surgery lined up, and I had to get it done, and I just didn't want to do it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Didn't want to do it, but because of the pain and all those things. Anyhow, so I finally, uh, by the voice of the Holy Spirit, was spoke through my wife to go and get the surgery done <laughs> because flying became difficulty and the pain was unreal. So I went to get the surgery done. I was thinking, oh, I don't want to do this. The hassle. Anybody I'm talking about? Yeah. The hassle and the appointments and the waiting and all those things. So I already started off being negative. I know you're looking at this perfect creature and think, it's so hard to believe. Um, so I started off being negative. I went to see the doctor, my GP, and she's very good. Thought it out. Send a reference letter. The letter came quickly. And then the, 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 uh, the NHS was so good because it was meant to happen the BC before COVID. It didn't happen. So they put it through private care, which was uh, a shock to me. And I wasn't sure because when I went in and they offered me a drink, I texted my wife. I said, I think I clicked the wrong box. I hope I'm not paying 15 quid for this coffee. <laughs> Cause she said, no, darling. It's, it's well, Anyhow, so... I was in the right place, but being a Caribbean man, I didn't want to pay. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? And uh, so I saw the consultant and uh, lovely Sri Lankan guy, uh, doctor, and then he said, oh, I see you're from Trinidad and Tobago. I was like, yeah. He goes, oh, I trained in Mount Hope. Now, that's a really posh hospital in Trinidad. And he said, I lived in Trinidad for two years. It's one of my best experiences of life. I was like, come on now. He said, don't worry, I'll look after you. I was like, come on now. You know, this is a God you serve. And then finally the, the, the surgery time came. And I don't like surgery. I don't like going under anesthetic and you're not, you're not around to see what they're doing. And if you, I said, I asked them, do you have a viewing window? Like my wife would come check that you, they can knock the glass. And, the other hand, the other hand. Because <laughs> I told him when he came before David and he was, I said, can you just write this hand? Just because, you know, you guys, you're doing so many, you might do the wrong hand, and then I'll come back and do the whole thing all over again. Anyhow, he did draw in my hands and stuff like that. And um, so we did the whole process, and for me, it was a process. For my wife, it was probably more an endurance of faith. And um, so when, when it took me up to the, to the theater, is, is that what's called the operating place? Uh, I had these beautiful nurses there, and uh, Nigerian nurses. Any Nigerian? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I love Niger Nigeria. is just, there's a way, isn't there? There's a way. And they're like, uh, bring your hands here. Okay, yes, you never say no. You never say no to a Nigerian nurse. Trust me. And she's like, oh, I'm just going to tie up your hands so you don't bleed out. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I said, well, don't let me bleed out because this blood I have has the blood of Jesus in it. And she goes, you are a Christian? I said, I'm a pastor. She goes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mary, her name was. She goes, oh, Jesus. He said, don't worry. We're going to cover it. This one's a Christian. That one's a Christian. He's not a Christian, but he's surrounded by a Christian, and you're operating on a pastor. And this is, I, I tell you what, I just thought, wow, God works things out. Even when I was coming out, she was like, you know, they were waking me up, and apparently I said some strange things, which is not new. But, uh, and then she said, don't worry, we'll hook you up. And I said, have you got any pepper soup? She said, no, no, no. You're not ready for pepper soup right now. <laughs> But I tell you, this is what God does. Whenever we go through stuff in life, God would bring people your way. He would open doors for you. He goes before you. Trust that God's going to work it out. You may never see them again, and it may not be God's desire for you to see them again. But there are little whispers to say, I am, I've got you at the palm of my hands. Things will go your way. Don't be discouraged. Don't be ashamed. I've got your back. God would look after you. Psalms 100 and verse 4, it said it this way, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. When you come to church, you come into church with thanksgiving. You come to thanks and give. Thanks and give is thanksgiving. Thanks and give. You come thanks and give. Before we get into praise, we give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endure forever. Psalms 107 verse 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. See, gratitude and gratefulness and thankfulness is more than a word. It's, a ma it's manifested by our actions. In many ways, the, the 
Gratitude is the fruit of a heart that is thankful for what one has received. I am grateful in life, not because of the stuff I have. I am grateful in life because Jesus died for me and gave his life for me and that I am a child of God. That is the bottom line of my gratefulness. Thank you, God, for you saved my life. Everything else is just a bonus. Then you go outside and you get to enjoy Whatever else is out there, and even if it don't go to plan, God knew it was coming your way, and he trusts you enough to let it happen in front of you. Amen. So you've got to trust God. Trust in God with all your heart. You know it now. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. If that job didn't work out, it was God's working for something better. If, you're, if whatever is good didn't work your way, trust God in a season that you're going through because it's only a season. Yes. Get a better perspective on life. Realize this, that I am not going to be this way all my life. But if I stay grumbling and I stay complaining and I stay unthankful, I remain longer in the departure area. I don't like the departure area. I'd rather be in arrivals. Some of us got to learn to leave the bad things of 2023 in 2023. Some of you have dragged 2019, 2018, 2006, 1945. You've been dragging it across every, you're bringing all these corpses of years with you, of people who have hurt you, people who have let you down. Let them go. Leave it all at the door and say, I'm thankful for the good things God has done for me. The more thankful you are, apparently, the less moisturizer you, leave, you need on your face. Do you know it takes more effort to frown than to smile? And you get more, what do they call these? Pigeon's feet? Huh? Crow's feet. Pigeon's feet. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know these things. David, did you know? Why are you laughing? So you're laughing and you don't know. You know in French. What do you, how do you say it in French? How do you say it in French? Huh? L'eclipse. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyhow. So, let's go through some things this morning. Are you with me? So, who are we to be grateful to? Well, let's, let's reflect back on that scripture in Thessalonians uh, 5, 12 to 22, which I read earlier that you might have forgot by now. But first one is we've got to be thankful to the Lord. Amen. How many are grateful that you're saved? Amen. Washed in the blood, sanctified, on the path to heaven, once you were going to hell. But how many are grateful for those things? That you could stand up and say, I'm going to give him my praise and, and thanks and worship him because once I was lost, now I'm found. Come on, anybody can say thank you, God. Lauren Hill said it this way, everything we do should result of our gratitude for what God has done for us. We are grateful for what all that God has done for us. Psalms 136, 1 to 3 says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God of gods for His steadfast love endure forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for His steadfast love endure forever. In fact, if you read Psalms 136, you should airmark it and read it all this week, is that it tells you all the way throughout that psalm how many times you got to give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you are a good God. Thank you, God, that you're going to do good things in my life, that even when I don't know, God, you're going to work it out. we got to worry less, trust God more. When worry come knocking on your door, Thank God that he's going to work it out. Psalms 104, 100, I'm sorry, Psalms 100 verse 4, and I already read part of this. It says, Give thank, uh, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Notice that thanksgiving and praise go together. Thanksgiving determines the level of worship we're going to get. Now you tell me this. If you've been given some sort of bad report, you know, maybe uh, 12 points on your Driving license, or is that, is that ridiculous? Is that like a. That's bad, that's bad. okay, so. Um, or, or you've been given a, a health care. Some of you have been there before. 
and then you get the report that is all clear, how many of you feel so happy to hear the... Raise your hand. You feel so... And you know what? It releases joy. That, oh, wow, thank you, God. And that should be the right, right response. However, even if we have nothing naturally to say thank you for, the fact that we are saved, when we come to church, we say, thank you, God, for saving me. And enter your courts with praise. I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. You may not have the best voice like David. You may not have the most eloquent singing. I mean, when you sing, the dogs may howl with you. But, but you've got to thank God that you can sing to the Lord a new song. You know, people sometimes can be harmful. People can be hurtful, especially people close to you, uh, family members or people who know you. And sometimes they don't understand your season. And then they try to, by the, by the systems of this world, try to interpret your season by their understanding. Don't let anybody use this world to interpret the season you're going through. God's got your back. They will never understand. Why are you going to church? Why are you doing that? Why? And you're going to say, hey, what, what's the bother to you? I'm happy doing what I do. I don't tell you don't go to that or do this. But why do you feel it this way? See, the devil could address it, guide himself in many different ways, even about some Christians, people who call themselves Christians. That's why I say Christian and believers. Some people, just because they're Christians, don't mean you listen to what they say, or they say they're Christians. You might be related. Anyway, we wouldn't go there. But, but you've you got to be careful what you let in. Filter it out. How do you filter it out, Pastor Chip? The word of God. Man shall not live by Instagram alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. This word, the Bible says, is a lamp unto my feet. So when people start speaking or you have family members and they start being negative about church or you coming to church or you giving or you doing whatever, filter it through the word of the Lord. Bless them that curse you. That was the message of Christ. Don't return evil for evil, but bless them that curse you. But then some people, you've got to choose who you let in your, in, in your air. I don't mean you don't take their call, but you might just want to take it really quickly and say bye-bye really quickly. Our example of being grateful comes and stems from, from our gratefulness for what all God has done for us. Thankfulness and obedience goes, goes, uh, to God goes hand in hand. You cannot be truly thankful if you're disobedient. Imagine a child saying to a parent, I love you and are thankful and grateful for everything you have done. You've been so good to me, mom or dad, but I'm not going to listen to what you say. How many think that don't really, that don't, you know, I'm talking about little children now. I'm not talking about adults here, but... They don't really work together. When we, when we, when we work in an environment of God, we learn that being thankful mean, for, to God means that we be obedient to Him. And by the way, if you're thankful for God and you're going to love God, it means not only you love God, but you love His church. You can't say, I love God, but I hate your bride. That's like saying to a man, oh, I, I, I really like you, but your wife I can't stand. How did you, well, no, that don't really work in my book. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You love God, you love church. So to love God is manifested in church. If you come to church and you're on your phones playing, I know some of you use your phone for, well, writing notes, we hope. We'll have a look afterwards and check whether you're playing games on it. The Lord knows. But, but well, you can't come to church and treat church like something to do to fill your weekend for two hours. Church is your manifested time with God. To say, God, I'm going to take time to dress up, come to church, and give you my highest praise. The second one is not that we be thankful to the Lord out of that 1 Thessalonians, but we're going to be thankful to our leaders. You remember it said it in 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. Now, one of the things about this sort of a role that most of you may not know, leaders, leadership, and it's talking about more, uh, the Greek word here has more to do with pastoral leadership, not just every layer of leadership. However, it does 
reflect on elders and every layer, but in this instance, it's talking about a pastoral role, is that most pastors, and I read this recently, uh, something I was doing with some pastors uh, in uh, another country, that most pastors today generally feel overwhelmed with what they've been given to do, uh, feel uh, that there's no gratitude for what they actually do, and most of them last between five and seven years in the role till they quit and end up selling houses or something else because the biggest problem in their life is not the call, but the people they're called to serve. And they end up leaving it. Now, I know this in a certain level because I've had, I mean, my wife and I have been doing this role for 21 years, 22 years, 22 years. You could give God praise for that. 22 years we've been pastoring Harvest City Church. So a little bit we are like uh, collectibles. You could put us on your desk. We are like collectibles. But the sad fact is not only pastors are... There are more pastors leaving the ministry than joining. So if you do the maths, that means that there's not, not going to be anyone around to pastor churches. And most of the time, it's not the world that hurts them, but it's within the house. The sad fact is, most pastors' children, by the time they reach 15, 16, want nothing to do with church. Nothing to do with church people or nothing to be around church people because they find it the worst place on the earth. And indeed, we have friends, my wife and I, who are pastors, some of who have been to preach here, that their kids don't come to church, not because they don't want to be in church, but because they've been hurt so much by the church that the last place they want to do is get to church. And sometimes we can put higher standards on others than we put on our own self. See, when a child is struggling, it will be, okay, it's just that child struggling. But if it's a pastor's kid struggling, it will be, oh, he should know better. She should know better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And what it finds is that both my wife and I are PKs, pastor's kids. And trust me, this was the last job I wanted to do. And my wife, one of the reasons she married me, thought there's no chance he'd ever be a pastor. <laughs> so she thought there is no way he's going to be a pastor, but God tricked her. And, uh, and then, obviously, when she sees sunshine, who's going to embrace the rain, right? So, um, so we, we find this, this problem in life where many leaders pastors, elders included, where we are called to do a work, all the elders are appointed, not necessarily called, they're appointed, move, move, but, but although you're called to do a job, the greatest problem of doing the job is working with people who actually appreciate the role that you do. So when Paul is writing here, he's saying, be thankful for who they are. And I'll let you determine how you be thankful. 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 18, let the elders, and this is talking about pastors as well, but elders who rule be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who are preaching and teaching. For in Scripture, it says, you shall not muzzle the ox when it's thread out in the grain. The laborer deserves his wages. And often one of the reasons why pastors actually end up leaving the ministry, it has to do with financial things like that. So I'll let you figure that out. 1 Thessalonians 5 to 5, 5, 12 to 13, it says, We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and uh, over you in the Lord and admonish you. And that level of respect comes in how we talk, how we behave, and how we work that way. Now, let me say this before I move to the last one. Honoring pastors or leaders, and I'm saying this as with the reflection that my wife and I are not getting any younger. And, in, in, in indeed, in, I know we have plenty, plenty years before us, but one day, if God doesn't come, somebody else will be doing this role. And we want to honor those who ever does this role as a church. Can I hear an amen? amen? Not just because of who they are, but because of their positions in life. And it's so great to get messages, as my wife and I get throughout the week sometimes, uh, on different formats, a card or something, you say, thank you for all that you've done. In fact, I got a text recently from Stu, Stu Coles. When you know I was studying this on Friday, just thank you for all that you've done. And sometimes those little things help you keep going. It's like when you're running a race and you have the water, some of you shake in your head. You've never run a race or anything to drink water, but agree with me. Uh, sometimes it's those little things that keep you going. Amen? The third one is we ought to appreciate each other. Each other. Often we don't appreciate each other till each other is no longer around. And we never say good words to each other 
We tend to wait for a funeral gathering then to say something good. I remember saying to somebody years ago, don't wait till the funeral to give me the flowers. Give me the flowers now. Because at the funeral, I ain't going to know. If you're with somebody in your life or you have friends and family around you, let me implore you today, a heart of gratitude, find something good to say to them this Christmas season. Something that you're grateful for. Write it in a card. I know some people, oh, I don't do cards because I'm going to forget. But those things, my wife and I, keep, we keep those things. We, 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 we reference them back and things like that because sometimes your text or your card could mean the world to someone. How many have ever got a text or a card and in that moment it lifted your day? Raise your hands. And, and sometimes don't belittle those little things. Just by remembering somebody, it's your birthday, it's this. Thank you for what you've done. And if somebody don't remember you, remember God never leaves you nor forsake you. Because it's easy to say, man, I thank everybody. I remember everybody's birthday. Nobody remember mine. Well, God knows us by name. Amen? But we should be appreciated of everyone else. Will Arnett said it this way, I am happy because I'm grateful and I choose to be grateful. That gratitude allows me to be happy. Happy people are attractive. That's a deserved an amen. <laughs> happy people are attractive. You may not be able to buy oil of Yule. You may not be able to buy the best Chanel makeup or whatever you have. But I tell you what, happy makes you beautiful. Doris Day. Anybody know Doris Day? If you don't know, ask Andy when the school with her. Doris Day said it this way. Gratitude is riches. Complaint is poverty. Wow. Complaint is what? Poverty. You ever find yourself complaining? I do. Hey, come on, be honest. Anybody ever find yourself complaining? Yeah, we had a Calypsonian. In Trinidad, we have Calypsonians, right? I'm sure you've heard of Calypso. How many of you heard of Calypso? Not just from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a song, right? And we have all these Calypsonians. We have the mighty Sparrow. He's world-renowned from Trinidad. Uh, we have all different levels of Calypsonians. And they were, it came out of the, out of the, the, the colonial days when, the, when we used to sing songs to make fun of our masters. Hide it in Calypso and reggae and things like that. And one of the famous Calypso from Trinidad is a guy called the Mighty Complainer. Because all his songs were complaining about the government, complaining about the road, complaining about life, complaining about erosion, complaining about this, complaining about that. But do you know, it's God's will for us not to complain. Go to the Lord in prayer. Something rubs you the wrong way, take it to the Lord in prayer. Something is not working out, complain to God. Let your requests be made known to God who is able to work on your behalf. God, why is it working this way? Why is it always going this way? God, can you fix this for me? Can you work it out? In fact, in one study, my time is sort of going, but in one study, health study I found, it says those who are grateful struggle, uh, those who are grateful in life struggle less with mental health issues than those who are ungrateful. Now, it does, say, it does not say if you're struggling with mental health issues because you are ungrateful. It does not say that. But it said the research has shown that if you learn to find great things you're grateful for and happiness, your mind will be in a better place for God to make you be thankful. And you'll have less things to stress about in life. We've got to be able to see this, that God wants me happy. How many know God wants you happy? But how many know what God wants for us? We've got to do it ourselves. We've got to choose to be grateful for the things we have in life. So I'm going to finish with these things and then we can go be happy with the kids. Is that all right? Five ways how ingratitude manifests itself. And I did contemplate whether I should finish with this, but then I think it's the Lord's will. But how do we know we're slipping into ingratitude? Because none of us live in that vibe for a while. But how do we know we're slipping into ingratitude or it's manifesting itself? Number one is our talk. I talked about complaining just now. But like the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you find yourself talking negative 
all the time about your work, your boss, uh, whatever it may be. When you start complaining more on your talk, your talk determines your direction. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Be thankful. No, I'm not saying that you put up with nonsense, but in many ways what gets you through the nonsense is being thankful. There's a saying in the United Kingdom, it's like water on a duck's back. Anybody ever heard that? So sometimes you just got to let, and I know it's difficult because some people it's hard to let it be water on a duck's back because words can hurt. Anybody I'm talking about? But make sure it's not your words. One of the things I pray to God is, Lord, give me the ability to hold my tongue. Anybody, anyone of you have ever said something that you wish you hadn't or, or thought something? Give me the ability to... Anybody have ever hold their tongue and then you find out the story and you're like, ooh, I'm glad I didn't... So how do we know ingratitude is manifest in our lives is our talk. The second one is our behavior. Our behavior. Eyes rolling. You know, somebody says something and your eyes roll. Being short, criticizing, held offenses. Or here's one that... This, the, the, the sort of the fruit that comes out of our behavior is then we, we feel like we're entitled. We're entitled. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We become entitled. Do you owe me this? You know, God owes us nothing. God laid his life down on the cross for you and I. So that means that everything is not an entitlement. It's a privilege to be in the kingdom of the Lord. Number three is putting on unrealistic expectation on others. We judge others, and this is a, a way of showing ingratitude. We judge others with a higher standard than we judge ourselves. And often we excuse him. Well, he calls himself a leader, or he does this, but he's this way. Listen, all of us have faults. Some more than others, me included. But it's easy to point out other people's faults than to point out their good things in life. When, you, when you're married for a long time and you get to know each other for a long time, my wife and I have known each other a long time, it's easy to take for granted how much years and things we have together. And as you get older, things change in your life, in your body. Don't work the same. Like I said, I'm now at that age, you go to bed and you wake up with an injury. You gr anybody I'm talking about, you go to bed and you have a muscle strain thinking, I can't remember working out yesterday, but why is... But, and then eventually in life, things happen. And, 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 and what I'm trying to get to the point is that none of us are on this planet forever. Be thankful for each other now. The fourth one is over-familiarity. How do you know ingratitude is manifesting itself in our lives? We become over-familiar with each other. We don't take the level of respect we used to do. And the last one here is, uh, how do you know ingratitude is coming into our lives? The loss of heartfelt worship or prayerlessness. We don't pray anymore. We don't pray for people. Remember Jesus says, bless them that curse you. Pray for your enemies. Be grateful this season. Let gratitude be on your life. You want good gifts for Christmas? Give good gifts in return. Come on now. Give, and it will be what? Given back to you. And when you give, <laughs> don't tell everybody how much you paid for it. Hey, you know I bought you this, right? It was 108 pound. Although I got a TK Max of 14 quid, but I'm just telling you, it was originally 108 pound. Don't be ungrateful. I love Psalms 51. Would you stand to your feet? I'm going to read the scripture. Psalms 51, 7 to 12. I just love this scripture. It's so, so applicable to our lives today. David here speaking. Look at the words. Purge me with hyssop. Wow. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins 
and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Well, I think God has said enough today that maybe he wants us to be just a little bit more grateful. How many would say God has maybe nudged or underlined or maybe highlight or maybe push the area in your life that you could be a little bit more understanding or grateful for? Raise your hands. And you know why, why he does that? Because he wants us to be better. He's not here to get at you or push a pen in your face and say, that's you, that's you, that's your mistake, that's your problem. No, he wants you to have a rich and satisfying life and a health-based life. And a lot of this is not just diet and exercise, but a lot of this is just being grateful and be thankful for all the good things God has blessed us with. Be thankful for the many years of blessing that God has brought in our lives and the friends around us and Christmas is that time that we remember it. The Americans go one step further. They have Thanksgiving, which is not a bad idea because it's a moment to stop and say, thank you, God. But really, as believers, we should be doing this every day, sitting at our table with our family and friends or, or sitting around Christmas time together or sending a card, taking time to write a card. You may have not done it before, but taking time to write a card and just point out areas that you're just thankful for. Because you know what? That comes back to you in a greater level than whatever you pour out. Whatever you give, you shall receive. Every, every head bow, every eye close, hands unto the heavens. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, God. Most of all, we're grateful that you saved us, that you saved a wretch like us, that you, you, you came in this world to Give us life and life more abundantly. Father, we are thankful. Come on, church. We, we just want to say thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. And we remember the many things you've forgiven us of. Our mistakes, our flaws, and our weaknesses. Let us never forget all that you have done. We are thankful. We are grateful. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Just put your hands down for a moment, but keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. But you are here today, and uh, somebody invited you to church, and you've never given your life to Jesus. The, the way you really appreciate what God can do for you is by inviting him to your heart. When he comes into your heart, he gives you the ability to be thankful and grateful, but he changes you from the inside out. The world's idea is to change you from the outside in, but Jesus comes and he changes from within. And how that happens is you, you pray and you ask Jesus, come into your life. We don't believe he's dead or it's just a religious icon that he's alive. And the third day, he rose again. And, and he said that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, then you will be saved. And today, if you have never asked Jesus into your life, here's a moment that you could invite him in and your life could be changed. Let's say these words, and I want everyone to say it and and even if you are a Christian, just go ahead and say these words, making it easier for those who've never said it before. Let's say, Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus who died for me and on the third day rose again. Jesus, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you in my heart and I confess you with my mouth. As Lord and Savior. Amen. Now keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. You said, Pastor, that's the first time or oh, I'm recommitting my life to the Lord. I want to give you a, a Bible, also a little book on what it means to be a Christian. Uh, if you're watching this online, you could write in and we'll send it to you free of charge. But if you're here today, you could get one now if you've given your life to Jesus. If that's you and you said, Pastor, I'm giving my life to the Lord today. Would you raise your hands where you are? There's no one looking around, but I would make sure one of our altar workers get this to you. Raise up really high so I can see there's a hand here. Anybody else? I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Oh, I'm coming back to him. 
Amen. Father, we thank you for this life today that has come back to you. We ask that your spirit would rest upon it today. We thank you for the good things that you have done, and we speak it by the blood of Jesus. Everybody say... Thank you for watching today's sermon. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. If you want any information on Harvest City Church, just go to our website or our app. That's all for today. See you next time.